Who thinks that this ban could potentially stir up more hostility, more, more violence toward our country? Uh, Kasim Rashid, please. Well, uh, it, it, it will stir more hostility because it's sending a very wrong message. You have someone like Rudy Giuliani saying that the president called me and said, make it a Muslim ban and make it look legal. Now, whatever he meant to say, what came out is we're trying to legitimize bigotry against Muslims. What we have with us right now is a suspension of people from seven countries that have never harmed us. We had a horrible situation in Canada where six Muslims were murdered by a white supremacist and the president didn't even bother calling it terrorism or acknowledge the fact that it's white supremacy. And now we're compounding that with the president removing the uh, federal surveillance on white supremacy organizations altogether, who, by the way, the FBI has acknowledged and admitted is a single biggest terror threat to America more than ISIS. So the message that's being sent is that white supremacy terrorism is okay and we're going to let it flourish and we're going to target Muslims even though the FBI tells us that the greater threat is white supremacy. And that is going to allow us to be more vulnerable. The FBI, the Federal no, Bureau of Investigation. Uh, what, under Obama? Yeah. So now the FBI is legitimate because it was under Obama. I mean, these alternative facts simply don't work. Well, you, have Kelly fact, you have Kellyanne Kelly Conway. You have Kellyanne Conway citing a massacre that didn't she exist. Uh, well, yeah. well, well, she has no, since amended her answer on that and said that she talked about. She meant to refer to it as a plot that that's, was that, uh, in the works, point. and, and, and those then, people and were have, sent back. Um, but Diane, go ahead. Did you want to respond? People are forgetting. Was this not the same list of countries that Barack Obama had listed? And so why is it now that it's about isolationism and white supremacy? No, we have to understand that. We have sovereignty in this country. We have a right to protect that. We had intelligence officers that in a hearing in front of Congress said, we cannot vet these people. We do not know who they are. They have no documentation. It, they, it, they come out of the, the woodwork. They don't know who they are. Why should we put ourselves in danger? Have a resettlement camp? We could do things like that. In more Muslim majority regions where they'll be more comfortable themselves. We're not trying to ban Muslims. There's many countries that were not on this list that's paused. So that's nonsense. All right, all right. We, we got a lot of people who want to chime in, but we're going to take a quick break. And I promise we're going to get to uh, all of you. Still ahead, protests have erupted across the nation in response to the immigration executive order, many describing it as a, quote, Muslim ban, which you just heard in this room. Is that fair? Is that what this is? Up next, our panel will discuss. We'll be right back. This is a temporary pause that allows us to better review the existing refugee and visa vetting system. Uh, I actually I totally disagree with my neighbor over I'm here. Go ahead. Yeah, I totally disagree with my buddy over here. You so see, sorry. you got to understand one thing. First of all, President Obama never turned a blind eye to the Middle East. Okay, Yemen came in during the time of President Obama. He never gave he, it a critical he, look, though, either. He gave a critical he look. He did not give it he a gave, critical he look. He tried to do whatever he can do. The challenge over here is you're labeling it. You're go labeling ahead. it. Not only are okay, you labeling it, but so you're Sean, also... You have the floor right now. Go ahead. You Not only are you labeling this, but you're also saying, oh, but the, but the Christians are allowed. And, and this has been said, but the Christians are allowed. These are refugees. These people, have their countries have been bombed, right? Your country, thank God, our country has not been bombed. All right, these people need to get out. They need a refuge. And I we guess one, we of the thing, one of the and, issues that's raised by process, that, though, and, and I want this, people to weigh in on this, hold on one second, is, you know, why we didn't help after the red line was crossed, right? You know, we, we weren't, now there's all this need for compassion for these individuals. But yet, when they were crying out to us, as you say, and being killed by the hundreds of thousands in their countries, um, we did not really do as much as we could have to help, some would say. I'm sorry, I disagree completely because the biggest people that are subject to terror by ISIS are Muslims mm -hmm. and they are victims of terrorism well, and you're any victim numbers versus percentages. No, no, I'm talking about worldwide. Muslims have been killed more and attacked more by ISIS than any other group. And would they deserve a right in this country to be re seek refuge from terrorism? And that's what America. No, no, no. Hold on. It is. I wouldn't doubt. No, I wouldn't doubt. Wait, 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 I mean, that raises the question. You know, then, then why wouldn't Muslims want to have the greatest protection of our borders, so that we can make sure that anybody who does, you know, want to cause harm is not able to get in to hurt more Muslims? I agree with you on that. But I think the thing is, is that our vetting process is very, very con concise and very, very thorough. If you are a refugee, everything that you go under for the two-year process of being vetted, that alone is has proven to be a wonderful model. Not to mention, no refugee has ever 
struck back here in America against you know, America. Go ahead, go ahead, Peter. So, Mark, yes, so, 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 quickly, so, and last so, and then we're going to come so right back. Ste stepping back, leadership matters. Leadership in the Muslim world matters as well. Right now, the narrative on Islam is defined by Daesh and ISIS. I want to look at proven models versus shallow theories on how to address this. As a Muslim, I want to keep America safe. I thank Carl and others for the service that they've given, but we've got to look at proven models. Proven models like the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, where he's a worldwide leader, His Holiness Mirza Mr. Ahmed, has led people in 206 nations with zero acts of terrorism. So in order to keep America safe, and he has said, let me tell you what he said, a Muslim leader, he said, our mosques are open. Transparency is important to trust. And, and opening up and, and living in a democracy. So I think if we understand Islam, if we truly, as Americans, understand what true Islam is versus these shallow theories and this misinterpretation, we will be able to keep America safe. And that's the conversation I want to have. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Still, let's, let's go to Imam Hamad. This completely makes sense. making sure our country is safe. But when you do it like this, you demonize an entire religion of people, but terrorism has no religion. No, when I was in Uganda, terrorism has no religion. When I was in Uganda, I lived there for six months. There was a Christian-based terrorist organization called Lord's Resistance Army. Mm -hmm. They were raping, Probably killing, you know, maiming you know, Muslims in the name of Christ, but we did not talk about them like this. So you it have to have the myth, same standard. Is, terrorism has no religion. It is a myth the Messiah to think, have, it is a myth to not, think that this is... We're supposed to be as humble as being a Muslim. No, it is and a myth so to it think... Doesn't, it doesn't really it's make a myth. Real. It's, it's a myth to think... Active investigations, terror investigations in every single state right now as we speak, right here in the United States. We're not saying ban Muslims, pick on Muslims. We're all Americans. We have to hold on. Hold on. But, but it is a temporary, it is a temporary People forget that it was an executive order. People forget that it was an executive order that took 100,000 Japanese and put them in concentration camps. 40,000 of them. Uh, were U.S. citizens, no, so we can't no, just say it was an executive order, therefore it must be done. No, 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 in 1939, right. this is the last point I'll make. Shereen, you've been wanting to get in here. Let's give you a chance. We turned away a thousand no, Jews, a third of them died system, in the Holocaust. No, we can't say never again and then repeat that. Word, thank you. If your belief system advocates for uh, treating women like property, if your belief system allows you to kill... Hold on, let me finish. If your belief system allows you to kill... Let me finish. If your belief system allows you to kill homosexuals, then that belief system has no place in the civilized world. And that belief system that all Americans need to unite against is radical Islam. I'm an American Muslim. Exactly. We're banning radical Islam. We're okay. betting for an ideology. But what you're talking about in terms of some of the tenets of Sharia and some of the things that we have seen happen um, in some of these Muslim countries is the essence of what the president is trying to protect against. He's saying, if you want to come to this country, uh, you have to respect the laws of the United States of America and the basic well, values. And that is something that has been the beginning of the When did we start conferring constitutional rights I want to go to the back corner here. Dr. Kashif Sharadi. Yeah, I just want to answer that question before yeah, I come to my main point. If, if anyone, anywhere in the world, believes in killing homosexuals, killing apostates, killing, killing blasphemers, I completely agree with Shireen that they should be banned from this country. However, saying that my faith believes in these things is completely atrocious. Yeah, Islam is against, Islam is against all these things. Islam stands for universal freedom of conscience and freedom of religion. See, this, this whole debate is very personal to me. Is, Shireen, can you, can you let him, go ahead, finish your talk. This talk about refugee ban and about uh, religious extremism is very personal to me. I am, uh, I'm someone who sought refuge in the United States eight years ago, fighting, I mean, escaping religious extremism and oppression in Pakistan. I'm a Muslim myself. And my Muslim community is persecuted there. I came here. I'm now a cardiologist. I spend my days saving American lives, day in and day out. And you, I, I you, know feel, that you feel that the language, absolutely, and you feel that, no. that the language of this insults everyone in your religion. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, saying that, I mean, look, if you're banning, if you're banning, like Linda who lives in my neighborhood, and that woman, born in America, tweeting pro-Sharia law tweets, you had on the other night, it was a fantastic interview with uh, Ms. Hersey uh, Ali. Ali. That woman, Sarsour, she's attacking women, saying that she should, they don't deserve to be women. They should have that, she should be, uh, she wish she could take their vaginas away. But she does this not represent the entire religion awesome. that she's speaking about. All right, do we have to take a break? All right, hold on. Hold on, guys. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to hear what our panel thinks when we come back, guys, of the government officials attempting to undermine the president by refusing his executive order when we come back.
That's the truth. I, I, so I got a when point. you have I got a point there, a, when you no, have all I, these people saying that oh they're constitutionally is constitutionally infringing on some somebody's rights, some uh, person in another country who we don't know who they are because that two year background check has nothing to check it against. We don't want them here. We don't. They, it does not help the United States to bring people we don't know here. So the, the underlying issue, the underlying issue, comes back to people. Uh, on the not underlying all passport holders, not all green card holders. We're not talking the about underlying all issue, Martha. Martha, the and underlying and issue that comes out in this. And we Martha, hold on, guys, because no one's going to hear what you're saying. So hold on, right here, quickly. Martha, Martha, what you're seeing in this room and across the country is the underlying issue is about Islam and the understanding of Islam. Mm -hmm. People are getting their information from fake news, from alternative facts. When you come back to real Islam, when you understand right. Islam, I, I understand. You, I understand what you're saying, but. What we're, where we are, hold on. That's what we're talking about. Is that they're trying to send a signal. And the signal is that if you wish this country harm, we're going to make it a lot more difficult for you to get in here. D is that a fair statement? Go ahead. I don't, I don't think this is, I don't think that, So the thing is, I think this is counterproductive because the fact is the refugees who are, who we're banning from this country are the biggest victims of terrorism. I see this like banning Germans in, in after World War II and saying because there's a Nazi party in, in Germany, we we're going to ban all Germans. No one is being, per th this is a, a pause. Right? So you have to go through a more stringent vetting process to get into the country. I understand. But there already is an extreme vetting process. I mean, every, it takes 40 years, months for someone to come to the United right. States. So, I mean, one of the questions is, does every country have the right to say, let's just take a moment and make sure that we're doing this, pro this properly?